Hello and welcome to this short tutorial video on the Info Development Framework. In this video I'm going to show you how you can create your own business objects and add them to your client. Furthermore, I'll show you the relationships between objects and create one as an example. But before we do that, let's start by creating two tables which we'll use as our business objects later on. Since it's fast and easy, I'll create them with an SQL statement I've prepared earlier. The first table is supposed to be the header of an order and contains status such as the order number and the customer's address. The second one contains the actual items within an order and the information how many are supposed to be delivered. Now that we have our tables, we can create the actual business objects. To do this, click on the Business Objects icon in your client. Once the window has opened, select Create in the top menu. The object name as well as the object's name are just labels which will only be visible in the graphical user interface. As such, you can select any name you like. The file name, however, has to be the name of the table we'd like to use. In my case, it's a primary object and I'll use the maintenance method Transaction Broker. Once you've finished, click on Create to get a preview of your business object. In this preview, you have the option to label your columns in the Attribute tab. This is somewhat important as you usually do not want to have these cryptic descriptions from your database and the client as well. To add or change a label, double click the respective column and change the three values Attribute Description, Label and Heading. By the way, the primary key will automatically be detected. You can see that it works by taking a look at the key column in the Attribute tab. Whilst we're on that topic, if you wish to do so, you can also tell the client that you'd like to auto-increment the key value. Simply go back to the main tab and select Maintenance. In there you'll find the attribute System Assigned Key Supported. You need to change that one to Yes and it will automatically detect the key and allow you to customize the increment process by clicking Define Key Syntax. Keep in mind that we have to enable the Custom Increment function before we can use it. But we'll get back to that soon. The second business object can be created the way we did it before, so you just have to enter UGUI names again and obviously the table name. Let's just check whether or not it recognizes our key values. And it seems to do. Let's have a look at relationships. By clicking create we can start to add one by selecting the business object we'd like to relate our current one to. The relationship type is many to one as we can have several records in our position table which belong to one and the same record in the head table. After we've selected the type, we need to state which columns are the ones we want to link to each other. If you would like to use a bidirectional relationship, we can explicitly say that we want to do that here. Afterwards, we just confirm and create our business object. Lastly, all the changes we've made have to be saved on the host system. To do that, select File and say Save to Host. It'll preview the changes and give you the option to confirm them. And now that our business objects have been created, we can continue by adding them to the client. But first let me get back to the increment function I talked about earlier. 
In the client, we have to select settings and click on maintenance classes. After we found our business objects, we need to change our object's system assigned keys to yes. Confirm the changes you've made and then everything's ready. OK, now obviously we'd like to access our business objects from the client and I'll show you how you can do that now. It's relatively easy but offers you a lot of functions. We'll explain some of those in future videos. Select Customize and Cards in the top menu bar and adjust the card you'd like to contain your business object. By moving the objects right or left, you can either add or remove them. As always, confirm your changes and remember to save. Now if we click on our object, you'll notice that there are not all the columns that your table actually has. Don't worry, we just need to tell the client that it is supposed to show us those. To do that, click on Customize and select Views. By double-clicking the items shown in the top, you can add them to your view. Last but certainly not least, we would also like to add records, wouldn't we? The way you can add one is the same you always go, by clicking the Create button. Yet there's just one attribute you can change, and that is the order number. Not exactly what we wanted. We need to customize the view by editing the template and double-clicking one of the values we have not added yet. Make sure that you select the right option when adding them, as some do not allow you to change the column's default value. It really is that easy and comfortable to add your own tables to this very variable and neat graphical user interface. More complex relationships are also possible, but as I mentioned before, we'll cover those in later videos. I'd like to thank you for your attention and I hope I could show you some of the possibilities of the Info Development Framework.